Good to have you back with us. I'm Bafi, aka the Tycoon Master. And today I'll be sharing with you how I was able to pay off my 2014 Mercedes Benz C300 Formatic that I bought back in 2015 in just two years. We are getting better with time and so is my beard. Thank you for your feedback and observations. Even though my beard might take 100 years to finally connect, we're still moving. As you know, everything we do here is about the long term and my beard definitely embraces that culture, sadly. You can see that we've changed our setting for our videos. This is a major step in the right direction, it's more professional and interactive. Now, could we have changed these settings much earlier? Absolutely, we could have started out looking like this, but you know, here at Tycoon Talk, we love showing people all the nuances and the little changes and advancement. You know, we like making sure we're taking our time so people can see that, yes, it takes time to work your way up to greatness. Part of our culture is teaching people to maximize what they already have. So as they're doing that, they can keep working on getting more resources to advance. As we always say, progress, never perfection, and we're bringing everybody with us on this journey. So welcome to the Tycoon office. Now let's get back on business. Let's talk about this Benz. Chip. Normally it takes four to five years for people to pay off their car. Believe it or not, a third of those with car notes actually never ever finish paying it off. One of the issues and challenges associated with it is just because you can afford to make payments monthly, it does not mean that you can actually afford it. Another setback is that by the time you finish paying it off, four or five years later, you have paid like, you know, $10,000 extra just in interest alone. And that's money that could have went towards something else that's way more precious to you. Let's be honest, if we could afford the car, we would have bought it off in cash. You know, the average car note for a brand new car in the United States is around $500. For a used car, it's at around $300 and change. That's a lot of money, so we know we can't afford it. We can only afford payments. And payments don't mean you can own the car. You rented it until you pay it off. Now, once I figured out how some of the things in this country works, I began what's called the tycoon journey. Ah, you like that, ah? <laughs> And since then, I've never looked at personal development and financial development with the same exact mindset. Keep in mind, normal equals broke. That's a fact. So I paid off the car in two years. Let's talk about how the first year went. So the first year, I was not chopping life at all. I mean, it was brutal. All I did was work and pay bills. You know, the two main bills I had was, of course, at that point, um, the car note and my student loans. So the first year, I was just working and just paying a lot of bills. And becoming debt-free was a top priority of mine. But Bafi, in America, everybody got debt. You can't avoid debt. We all live on debt. The country's borrowed on debt. The country functions on debt. And that's exactly why most people never get out of it because it's their mindset and their perception. They're already stuck before they even begin. They don't even give themselves a chance to win. The worst thing you can do is to settle for normal by default. At the end of the day, if you go for something or you try hard and try to achieve something different than most people are trying to work on, if you fail, guess what? You become normal like everybody else which is basically living paycheck to paycheck, living on borrowed debt, and spending and trading a lot of time for money, but we claim that money is not everything, but we trade most of our time for money and still don't have any. Oh, that was bars. Yeah, bars. So becoming debt free was a noble goal of mine because the advantage is in doing what most people or what nobody's really doing. What percentage of the American population can say that they're debt free? Better yet, how many people do you know within your family, your friends, your colleagues, you know, your co-workers, how many of the people that you actually surround yourself with and know on a daily basis are actually debt free? Most, if not all the people that we know actually live in debt. So imagine the advantage and the leverage you have by being debt free, especially before you have a mortgage, before you have kids, get married, you know, have that whole family responsibility, which amplifies your priority and what you're responsible for in tenfold. Now, yes, I understand everybody's circumstances are different and some things are out of your control. But everything we speak on here in Tycoon Talk, we're talking about the things that we can do something about, not the ones that we have no choice in. And plus, I wanted to chop life for long term, not just, you know, oh, you're, you're in your 20s, so, you know, um, you're supposed to just enjoy your 20s and life is short, yada, yada, yada. I get it. That might be the case for some and some might prioritize those activities. But for me, I have 10,000 ancestors behind me I have family that have been through a lot and I definitely want to push this needle forward and put the family in a whole different situation. You know, so I owe it to them, I owe it to my family, I owe it to my parents, I owe it to myself, I owe it to create a better future and I owe it to contribute to society and hopefully help others design the life that they want. I was able to pay off my bands in two years by focusing on two key areas. One is that I had to increase my income and the second is that I had to come up with a budget. 
One might think that I make a lot of money because I was driving a 2014 Mercedes Benz in 2015. But life always teaches us, man. Looks are very deceiving. So don't believe everything that you see out there. I wasn't making enough money from my one job to kind of cover and speed up the process like the way I needed it to be. So I ended up taking on a second job and extra gigs and other stuff here and there, which meant that I had to trade more time for more money so I can pay down my debt. Let's go through some of the jobs I did. Let's see if I remember all of them. Rapid fire, boom. I worked at McDonald's, YMCA, Trader Joe's, Valley Hospital. I did personal training. I still do personal training, coaching kids, soccer one-on-one, -on -one. Um, working at uh, soccer camps. Uh, what else, what else, what else? <laughs> Worked for a printing company, used to make banners and signs. And throughout all these different jobs, I was working primarily full-time at my university. I was still in school working on my first master's and working on my second master's. Still find a way to read books daily. How I did all of this, I honestly don't know, but I'm glad my why was strong enough to get me through it. So your boy was working day, night, overnight, two full-times full-time and part-times, gigs, extra stuff all over the place. So um, I'm glad I made, I made it through. And long story short, it allowed me to really attack, you know, these car notes and kind of be able to attack the principal as opposed to just, just touching on top of the interest. The second major thing that helped me pay the benzo was budgeting. Now, I kid you not, my budget for spending every two weeks was $50. So I had to make $50 last for two weeks. That's how sure I was and how much I believed in the process and what I was going through and how far I was willing to go to finish paying this car off. I knew what I wanted, I learned how to get there, and then I just took actions and just stuck to the courts. And I didn't care much about what others thought. Now you're gonna understand why I was getting a haircut like four or three times a year. Just think about it. If I got $50 every two weeks as my budget, if I get a haircut, that's $20, $25 plus tip, you know, let's say $25, $30, bruh, uh-uh. I can't afford a haircut because that's my budget going right there. That means if I get a haircut twice a month, that's half of my whole spending budget. And my car gas money comes from that budget as well. You know, it's a bench. I can't just put in no regular, regular gas. You gotta put in some elite stuff, you know? You gotta put premium, you gotta maintain it, take care of it. I took these type of L's for four years. I'm not telling you that you gotta go and you know, not get a haircut for the whole year. Just because I did it that way don't mean you have to do it that way. Don't go around and around saying, yo, Tycoon Master said this is how I gotta move in order for me to make it. You gotta figure out what works best for you. Success on any level is by design, and to a large degree, so is failure. So that was year one. The second year, I got so tired of just working for the car. Let's put this talk on simmer real quick. I be sitting at work like, bruh, I only drive this car at the most 30 minutes a day, but I have to work all the time just to keep it. I have to work with a lot of people, which, I mean, we all know, you know, sometimes it's hard working with people and some of them I don't even like. They just be sitting outside doing nothing for me, making me no money, and just collecting my hard earned money with all my time, energy, man. All right, we're back to cooking. So I wanted to get out of student loan debt fast, but that was nearly impossible if I constantly had to spend a lot of money on the car. At the time, I had a small Robinhood portfolio worth around $20,000. And I honestly don't even know how I was able to save and invest that much money in such a short period of time. You'd be surprised what you're capable of when you really you know, simplify a lot of things and, and narrow your focus. So I sold all my stocks out of that $20,000 Robinhood account just so I could pay off the car fast. So technically, I paid off the car in one year, six months. But uh, <laughs> you know, who's counting? Yeah, nobody. Then I had to restart the Robinhood account from zero to scratch. If I never sold the share out of that account, that $20,000, today will be worth at least $30,000 to $40,000. But I got tired of working for the car. When you function different and make abnormal decisions and have different actions, it comes with a hefty price and a lot of sacrifices. Most people can't relate to it, so therefore they're not gonna understand you. Most of the things that I was learning and was doing during this tycoon journey, you know, my family, loved ones, and friends, couldn't really relate to it and they couldn't really understand me. They didn't understand why, why I function and move the way I move. Why am I going through all this, this heartache and all this headache? They all think I'm crazy and that's fact. They're not lying. It is very abnormal to do some of the things that I've been able to do and continue to do. But I've seen what they've been through and the lifestyle that they have to live now. And I sure don't want that for myself and for my future. And I want everybody else to benefit from that. In life, whatever you do, people must talk. Whether, no matter what you're doing, people are gonna have opinions. And that's okay, you can't take it personal. 
you know, I have family, friends, colleagues, church members, you know, people called me cheap. You know, why are you working so hard? Why are you working two jobs? You're young. You should just be traveling and enjoying life. Um, debt is normal. Everybody has debt. It's part of your life. Why are you not getting haircuts? You know, why are you not enjoying life? You should move out of your parents' house. All types of different remarks. But I was willing to deal with all of that and be, you know, as non-biased as I could possibly be. Because to this day, I'm probably one of the few people in our family that probably has one of the best financial health in terms of financial net worth and also who is helping teach the younger ones how certain things go about and also using the platforms and my resources to help better everybody else. At the end of the day, everybody has an opinion. We all do. You know, you don't gotta like what somebody's telling you or you don't have to like somebody's opinion, but you have to respect it and you can't take it personal. If you know what you're working on is noble and is really something that, you know, is coming from your heart and you care a great deal about it, just keep going, man. Sooner or later, a lot of people will come around and understand you better as time goes on. Could it be discouraging? Of course, absolutely. You have to keep in mind, tycoons are humans too, but we know that we also can't take it personal. We all speak and interact from our experiences, knowledge, wisdom, and mindset. With that being said, I'm very fortunate enough to have the opportunities that they never had. I have time, I have energy, I have the resources, I don't have the same family responsibilities as they had, and I didn't have the same challenges growing up that they had. So, you know, I can't just focus on my ego and how I feel about the situation. That's not gonna help us make progress. It would be a waste of my time. You have to be patient with others, just like how they have to be patient with you. But honestly, those two years were one of the craziest times of my life, but I grew so much during that time. I basically said no to like everything, and I look crazy like physically, but it's been a crazy tycoon journey and we are still on it. Even though at times they didn't know what I was doing or why I was doing it, they still loved me and just, you know, supported me and accepted me for who I am. And I'm very fortunate to have such a strong support system like that. And I wish and I hope everybody is fortunate to have such a strong support system like that, you know, through their journey of life, whether they're working on their own business, whether they're working on nine to five, whether they're trying to do something that, you know, it's just out there that nobody can really relate to or understand. The best thing families can do really is just to support them and just show them love and accept them for who they are. So now the car's paid off. What are some of the benefits of going through that journey? Number one is speed. Now that the car notes was out of the way, we could move to phase two. My car note was $400 a month. Insurance was $300. I was a first time buyer. I'm young. It's a Benz. I gotta have full coverage. I can't be out here playing Russian roulette with that one. If it was a Honda Civic, then I would've been like, eh, it is what it is. Combined, that was $700 a month on the car alone. But once I was able to pay it off, that insurance dropped to $200 a month. So now instead of spending $700 a month, now I only spend $200 a month. This freed up $500 for me to work with and allows for more flexibility. And I can't ignore the primary benefit, which is no car debt. You know, I didn't owe nothing on the car. I didn't have no car notes no major expenses for the car, so therefore I was no longer a slave to the car and I wasn't working for the car. Lastly, morale. Your energy is better, you're making progress, you can actually see it. I was one step closer to my goal, so I felt pretty good and I was happy to take on the next thing and knock that out the way too. It was then that I learned a very valuable lesson. I learned to become like a Benz. Sit in the parking lot and just collect money like a landlord with minimal movement, and minimum energy and time being spent on working for the money. So I tip my hat to Mercedes-Benz for that $30,000 lesson. Because of you, my financial health is in a much better place. Now you know how I was able to pay off my Mercedes-Benz in less than two years. Share with us in the comments on what journey you're currently on. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, put your notification bell on, and as always, stay blessed, tough life, and stay tycoon. Cheers!